I just got this smooth for, so I figured, what the hell? Why don't we do this? Smooth four, little thing. Crappiest selfie. I'm gonna call this a boom pole, but it's just a crappy selfie pole. Right, zoom four, we got this. I don't know what I'm doing. I got my phone. We're gonna go shoot some crap and see if this thing can do what it says it can do. See you in a moment. I'm back. Phone, crappy, call it a boom pole. This thing really sucks. Let's actually go over this thing now and I'll tell you all about it because uh, I think it's really cool. Let's start with the case. It's this foamy stuff. Um, I really like it. It contains everything in here uh, really nicely. It doesn't fall out. The nice thing about it, it's great for transport and in case you drop stuff, it should protect it. I don't really care because I don't really drop stuff. Okay, well, I guess my iPhone would beg to differ with that statement. Comes with a charging cord for charging the unit itself. And it comes with this little mini tripod. I like this. It's not cheap. It's not a piece of crap. And uh, folds out. So it's nice. It works. Little mini tripod just screws onto the unit through the quarter inch uh, tap threaded hole in the bottom of the unit. It's obviously not on now, but uh, it's really stable. I've tried it in a few shots and it works great. And you have a $139 stabilizer for your phone that works. The real power is in the ZY Play app, which you can download from the Apple App Store or Google Play. I suggest you make sure you have the latest firmware from Zhuin, which you can download and install from their website. I love being able to upgrade the firmware. You're basically downloading new software to the unit in case there's bugs in the unit or if the manufacturer comes up with new features for nothing, you just download it, put it into the unit and you're good to go. Now it should be obvious that the camera in the phone comes into play on this. 
If you think you're gonna go in some low light situation and uh, throw the uh, zoom all the way up and not get crappy footage, you're fooling yourself. It's just like any other camera. You need light and you need to plan your shots and, and what you're gonna shoot. Everything on this is metal, probably except for this housing here. I don't know what material it's made of. I've dropped the thing, it hasn't damaged it at all. It's pretty sturdy, it's some sort of plastic. What I do like about it is it makes it light. So when you're out there all day holding this thing or three or four hours holding this thing, you don't get a lot of strain on your arm like you would with something that was a bit heavier. Here's something that most people don't think about when they're gonna go out and chew with this thing is the foam. The first thing you wanna do is take a microfiber cloth and clean the lens or maybe some alcohol and water or something. But if your lens is got smudges or something on it, you're gonna waste all your shooting trying to figure out what's going on because your lens is smudgy. I really like how they did this. They have these grooves in here to hold the phone. And then on the back end, back here, there's another little groove in here that accepts the phone. So when you go to mount the phone, it's pretty simple and it seats really well. You just throw the phone in here like this, jank it in, push it down, and you're there. That phone isn't going anywhere. Balancing this is a piece of cake. You usually don't need to do this. This handles the rotation in case you have a smaller phone or something like that. I don't ever mess with that. Um, what you do is you're just trying to adjust the phone so it just kind of does that. It just kind of hangs out there. The way you adjust that is once you get your phone in, there is back here this knob right there. You just loosen it and move this in and out until the phone just kind of sits in there. And again, to mount the phone, you throw it in there, you yank it down to the end. That's a good balance right there. That isn't going anywhere. Really simple. You could certainly mount your phone, just power the unit on, hit your camera app, and you're ready to go. Where the real power comes in is the ZY Play app. It runs, you just tell it you want to connect to your Bluetooth device, which is this unit. It looks for it. It finds it. And now you're ready to go again. Looking at the handle, we have the control wheel for the menus. This is for selfie mode. You press it left, it turns around. Uh, this allows exposure things to happen. Here's how you view your pictures. Up here you can set all sorts of settings there. Uh, this is turn it on and you're able to turn this rolly thing into a focus or a zoom. Here's how you take a photo. That's how you start recording. This is whether you want your display on or off. Here's that follow focus, the uh, basically here, and here's the lock mode. Turn it on. You just hold down the button for a second. It turns on. You have some blue lights here which shows what your power is. Eventually it gets down and it shows you it's red. I've never got down to red. It's, it's, I've had this thing, I haven't even passed the 12, maybe six hours, and uh, haven't got to it. If you turn the gimbal around, you'll notice on the back that there are these two switches here, right here. One of them, if you press down, that keeps the thing going up and going down as you want. That's the way you lock the way the thing is up. The other one is a follow mode, which allows you to just move it up and down as you're going. You'll see some in some of my shots how these works. Really like that. The other thing to mention about this particular focus and zoom knob, what it has is, it has a marker here. So you could actually mark the zoom point as being here, then come along and either put some tape or something, and then you can actually pull focus points on this thing, it's another really nice feature of this thing. I really love this standby mode. You simply grab this and dock it, and it puts the unit in standby mode, and you're not running really, there's just a little bit of power, trickle power going on here, and uh, it's a real lifesaver. You can get about 12 hours running time out of this. You start using standby mode, you'll get way more power out of this way before your phone runs out of power. The way you undock this thing is just like this. You just grab this, undock it, and you're ready to go. This cool knob over here is a zoom and focus button. It 
automatically takes control of your phone, allows you to zoom and focus on things. If you press the button, it becomes lit. It turns into a zoom knob, which you can also control. And if you press the button again, this becomes a focus control. So you can run focus in and out however you want, which is really cool in some of these modes where you can definitely do rack focus and things like that if you set it up correctly. I really love this feature, as you'll see in a moment in some of these other modes, what you can do with this thing. Last thing I want to talk about that nobody seems to be talking about is if you lift this up, right here is a little tiny mini USB cable. What that's for is if you get a mini USB cable and a lightning jack for your phone, you can tie this cable into here, tie the cable right under here and put your phone in there, and what will happen is the unit itself will charge your phone. This thing gets 12, 14 some odd hours. My phone, I don't know, it lasts an hour maybe or two of shooting. If I have this thing in here, I'm gonna get maybe five or six hours out of the gimbal itself and another five or six hours out of the phone because it's gonna be fully charging the whole time. That is brilliant. I haven't tested this. I need to get a cable. But when I do, and if it works, <laughs> this is really one of the most underrated features in a gimbal I've seen in a really long time. Now you're looking at the pan follow mode. You'll see as we twist it, it follows it on the panning direction. The other thing you should notice is the phone itself is trying to, like any phone, is trying to figure out what the heck do I focus on? You could certainly just lock the focus by touching the screen here. And then it won't do that anymore. In a moment, I'll show you how to lock the focus through the unit. So here's your pan follow. It's moving as I move the unit. Now your lock mode, it's the pan lock mode. It doesn't matter how you move the unit. It'll continue to just track on what you're doing. This is really handy when following people or doing upside down shots of feet or something like that. Uh, makes it really easy. The other thing about pan follow mode is you don't want to mess with the screen and touch it because all your controls are here, which we'll see in a moment. In lock mode, as you'll see, you're actually going to use that and you are going to touch the screen because you can just grab this thing and go ahead and frame what you want to frame up and it's fine just like that. Remember this lock mode because there's a lot of different actions we'll be doing where you're going to want to have it in lock mode, which you'll see in a minute. Now these different waypoints allow you to do quite a bit of things. For instance, if I go into my menu and I say what camera mode do I want to do, I'm going to flip over to uh, let's take a look at a motion time lapse. So what it's asking me to do is it's asking me to hit a waypoint. In other words, what's the first point where this is going to go to? This is where you put it in L mode. You don't want to mess with this when it's in pen follow mode because it gets confused. Put it in L mode. And then you can come over here and say, uh, let me hit a waypoint over here. Press the photo button. Takes a little picture. And then you can move over here and say, uh, that's going to be my other waypoint. Photo button. You move down. Uh, you can change the focus presets that you want and various different things, uh, whether it rolls or how much you want it to roll. Uh, I'm going to leave the, basically the tilt lock this way is going to be on. The pan lock is going to be on. I'm going to leave the autofocus, lock that. Next. Now it's asking me, okay, I got a half a second. If the duration is 30 seconds, I'm going to get a two second video. I'm down here, hit start. It resumes to the starting point, which I first set, and now it's time lapsing. So every half a second, it's basically taking a picture and taking a picture and taking a picture. And it's just going to sit there and time lapse through this whole thing. Motion time lapse, which I don't know, you can't do that with your phone. I love the being able to set these settings. How many pictures per second are you going to shoot? How long is the time lapse going to be? You can set it for just about anything you want. And these waypoints, yeah, that's done. These waypoints are not just one or two. You, I think you could set five or six waypoints in here. Let's take a look at what we got. Press the down button to take a look at what we got. 
There's our video. And there's our time lapse. Pretty simple. I mean, it's the easiest time lapse in the world, uh, I think. That's pretty cool. Here's another cool thing to do with this vertigo mode. Now, when you're doing vertical, what you're doing is you're setting, here's where, how far I'm gonna be away from something, and then I'm gonna set the focus on it, and then you're gonna move, say, five feet and set the focus over there, and then what happens is you're gonna do vertical mode, and you're gonna start walking, and it's going to either pan in, or excuse me, zoom in or zoom out as you do, that gives you vertical mode. You could still use this vertical mode for just a zoom, if I come here and I say, okay, let's set our camera setting to a vertigo mode, and I'm gonna set the waypoint right there. That's what I want. Now I'm gonna set the second waypoint by going into the zoom mode. Right there. And uh, let's just set it right there. Maybe I'll grab focus on her right there too. Cool, press the button. There's my second waypoint. I'm gonna start this thing. Uh, leave the focus alone, we'll leave all that alone. Uh, let's do a sec 10 second zoom. The save will save it so it's a preset so you can shoot it over. And you just press start. You can also set the zoom for the motion time lapse and the different waypoints. I mean, <laughs> you could basically set up a shot to say, I wanna focus on this, and then I want to move over to here, and then I want to move over to here, and then I want to zoom out, and that's really cool. I mean, I think that's awesome. For people shooting video and films, this is by far probably the best tool I've seen to come out for years. And hey, if all you're gonna do is shoot copious amounts of B-roll, this is the tool you want. And it makes one hell of a present. <laughs> for people if you're thinking, what am I gonna buy my nephew or my son or my husband or my wife or whatever who likes to shoot with an iPhone? Uh, 139 bucks. One week left in the Basic Filmmaker $300 Amazon gift card giveaway. If you haven't entered, I don't know what you're thinking. Maybe you don't like money or something like that. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you can receive weekly videos. Thanks for watching. I just got the smooth four, so here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> the end is taped. Uh, <laughs> I think I need to go get a razor knife to open this. <laughs>